Hey, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV, and we have with us today a very special guest, Dr. Melissa Blunt. Many of you know around Evanston. I mean, the woman, her and her husband are just a power couple here in Evanston, always doing things for the community. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Dr. Blunt, her uh, quilting. She does quilts, um, social justice quilts, which have been awesome. You've seen her at the Black Museum. And the woman is a clinical psychologist. So she has insight that we are truly needing right now during this COVID-19 lockdown. She has always been just um, someone who brings a, 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 a soothing, comforting perspective on um, things that we might be struggling with emotionally, spiritually, uh, mentally. And uh, right now we are in new times that none of us have ever been through, <laughs> ever. Sure. Sure. So yeah, how many of us have been on lockdown, you know, in our own homes, just prisoners pretty much in our own home and afraid to go outside and breathe, fear of dying, like, when have we ever been in that space? Dr. Blunt, please help us through this. I mean, so many people are suffering from depression right now. Um, it's impacting marriages. It's impacting mm -hmm. children. Uh, it's having such an effect on us. What, what have you been finding? Like, please share with us some information. <laughs> help us get through this. Well, you know, I think the the first thing we can do is like um, make a distinction between like trauma and depression, anxiety and grief and loss. So, you know, depression is where someone really feels like they're lethargic or not, they can't take pleasure in things that they used to, you know, it gets in the way of your everyday living. So a lot of people were suffering from depression and anxiety, you know, pre-COVID. But what I think we're really experiencing is like a collective trauma and grief. Because like you said, we've never before ever experienced anything like this in our lifetimes. You know, um, people have spoken about the pandemic of, you know, 1917, right. but you know, that was a hundred years ago. So there's been, there's never been anything like on a global scale that we've ever seen this kind of uh, devastation, highly contagious virus that has such a uh, lethality to it. So I really think we're experiencing um, Malika like a collective trauma and then the grief and loss from us not being able to socialize and connect and be in community with each other. That's, that's a big thing. So the way we're feeling is a normal response to what's happening to us. So I think that might be helpful for people so that they don't feel like, what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling this way? Like this is an appropriate response to what's happening to us. Does that make sense? That, that does make sense because yes, the need to gather. I mean, that's just part of what we do. We, we gather, mm -hmm. around people. we have community, we go to church, we, you know, uh, go to the coffee shops, meet friends for dinner. And now all that has come to a sudden halt. And now we are just confined and we can't embrace people anymore. I, even family members, you gotta like wash your hands before you even touch a family member now. Like, yeah, that is, that is traumatic. To the, to the soul, to the spirit. Yeah, and, and, and it is. I mean, like, uh, you know, we, you'll see, we'll be out walking and we'll see friends that you've seen a hundred times before. And that natural inclination is to go up and hug and, you know, kiss them on the cheek. And it's just like, oh, nope, can't do that. You know, back up six feet away. Mm -hmm. So that, that, I mean, the way that we engage with the world has completely shifted and changed. People are suffering financially. Uh, you know, some people are fortunate enough to be able to work from home, but you know, within I think four weeks, 22 million people lost their jobs, yeah. um, and so th that 
that's even different from the crisis and the recession that happened in 2008, 2009. We, did, we, you know, we saw job loss, but not to this degree and in this short span of time. So people are not only suffering from fear of the virus, but these kind of economic losses in such a short period of time and fear and anxiety around that. And then you did mention depression when we first started talking. So people who suffer from depression and anxiety already, that's only been amplified, uh, you know, if you suffer from depression and anxiety during these kinds of times. And the ways that most people would cope are ways that I would recommend in my practice. I'd be like, hey, get with your friends. Even when you feel like, don't feel like it, Go and be with friends, go out and be around people, be out in the sunshine and um, try and find activities that you like to do. All that has been canceled. Mm. So, you know, the ways that people were coping and trying to deal with depression and anxiety, that's a lot of that has been stripped away from people. So um, you're right, people are feeling a depression. I just wanted to make a distinction between this being a collective trauma and that we're all really grieving and suffering significant losses in many different ways, you know, whether it be relationship, financial, a community, community and, and those kinds of things. Uh, what's your advice to people who have suffered that, that job loss, that business, some people are losing their businesses. You have employees who have been laid off. They don't know if they're going to have a job to return to. Um, what would you suggest to them to get, because that is majorly traumatic because you didn't see this coming, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I, I think the best thing you can do is just be, this is where the benefit of social media because people, everyone is trying to support each other. So people are starting GoFundMe kinds of um, things. You know, I, I saw that there was a GoFundMe for the uh, uh, older black couple who own uh, Yo Fresh. Yeah. Um, you know, my friend Lena Kim, who owns Nice Lena, she started a GoFundMe page. Uh, you know, there's certain um, loan, well, uh, you know, we thought that there were loans. Um, that and uh, loan forgiveness programs that are, were going to be given out, but a lot of that um, they've run out of they've run out of money. Exactly because okay. of our poor leadership. But but I will say here in Evanston, I do think, and Illinois, I do think that we have a governor that's on our side. Yeah. We have folks like Jan Schakowsky, you know, uh, Robin. Um, I'm, Gable. I'm sorry, Gable. Mm -hmm. um, who are, you know, and uh, Governor Pritzker, who, who are, um, and Senator Durbin, who are really trying to advocate for us. So I think we are in a better place. And, you know, I, again, financial stuff is outside of my wheelhouse, but I think the more that you can be in communication with folks who are working on those and, you know, we have a lot of local banks here. We have credit unions here. So I think going to smaller financial institutions, you know, the, the, the thing that's been striking about all of this is that people are looking more to local and um, small businesses to help them versus national and um, bigger banks and that kind of thing. So I think the more you can be in communication with your community and local um, community financial institutions, that might be of greater source than, you know, unfortunately than our federal government at this time. Okay, and yeah, yeah, people are definitely needing to be a little more resourceful to survive this. Um, and share and share that you're in need. I think a lot of times that those kind of losses can build in humiliation and shame. But the more you can talk about it and really say, hey, I'm in need of food assistance or food support. You know, um, we've got a lot of restaurants who are doing phenomenal um, giving work around um, food support here in the community. Mm -hmm. So if, if you need help, 
I would really encourage people to, to, you know, strip away that kind of shame and embarrassment around asking for help. You know, even though we can't physically be together, this is a time to really support each other emotionally. And if you have more to give, give it financially to those who are struggling um, in those kinds of ways. Yeah, this, this definitely isn't the time to, um, this is the time to definitely put that pride aside because a lot of 22, 20, what, 20, over 20 million people are in trouble right now financially. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're not alone. You are definitely not, not alone. Not at all. Not at all. And this is a time for us to put more pressure on our elected officials. You know, like I, I'm seeing clients virtually, but I'm paying for office space that's not being used. That's a lot of people who are paying for spaces that they cannot use right now. So we need a collective way of addressing these huge financial hardships that people find themselves in. So the more we can move as a community and put pressure on folks as a community versus you alone calling and talking to your landlord and saying, hey, what kind of breaks are you giving in the next few months? You know, as long as this uh, <laughs> shelter in place order is, I mean, we all have to be uh, in, in communication and, and connected to each other, even though we find ourselves feeling more isolated than we ever have. Um, now, what is your advice? They said the domestic violence has risen. Um, I know I've, I've spoken to um, a couple couples where it has really put a strain on their marriage. They're so used to you know, having their careers and they come home. Now they're really realizing they're coming home and really only spending a few hours out of the day together and where they appreciate each other because they haven't been together all day. Now they are confined, especially if you're in a small, you know, place, you are confined and really having to really know your partner all over again. <laughs> and for some people is they are not liking <laughs> their partners anymore. Some people have brought them closer. It's opened up communication. They're falling right. in love all over again. You know, people are making love, having, you know, doing their thing during quarantine more and more. And then you have, <laughs> then you have those who want to freaking kill each other. So yeah. what what is your what is your advice to, to that? I mean, that's, it's kind of, I mean, you know, I'm laughing about it, but it's really uh, disturbing. Yeah, no, I've worried about that too. I mean, I saw one uh, statistic and I, unfortunately I can't remember where I saw it. Um, but I think there, you know, how there was this rush to buy guns uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the shelter in place. So a lot of organizations who do domestic violence or inti intimate partner prevention and abuse awareness were concerned about that because before all of this would happen, I think the statistic is like 52 women are killed a month um, uh, from gun violence uh, due to intimate partner violence. So I worry about what all these guns that people bought at the beginning of this, what that's going to mean in homes. Mm -hmm. So I would say for women or for whoever is, you know, is feeling like they are not safe to again, try and figure out how to reach out or to connect with resources in your community. Like we have the YWCA here in Evanston. Um, and then there's a number of uh, hotlines. Um, and, and again, I'll get you those resources after we talk that people can connect with. But I, I, would, I would say for people who aren't in that kind of severe issue and are just finding that a relationship is more unpleasant because you're not able to escape your partner, that you do things like, figure out what's your zone in the house and say, hey, this is my protected area 
and I'm going to have this from this time to that time, you know, like really structure your time or figure out, okay, I'm going to have the TV between this time and this time. Like th this is a time for people to really be very clear and, um, um, uh, unashamed again about what they need and so if you need to watch a certain amount of tv from that time then it's okay like do your thing if another partner needs to get up at seven o'clock in the morning and go walking for two hours then go and do that you know that no one has said that you can't go outside we can go outside as long as you're not in crowds of uh people and that kind of thing yeah and if and if you're in if you're going to the grocery store or to a store or something like that then yeah we all are now being asked to wear masks but uh you can certainly go outside that is critical going outside even if you're in your backyard or if you have a balcony or you go you know luckily we live by the lake here you can go and uh walk by the lake early i would say early to avoid crowds and that kind of thing and also be really honest um, with your partners about, hey, this is not the time for us to really get into uh, what I don't like about you. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is a moment to put all of that on pause <laughs> until we can really figure out you know, some safer places to have those kind of conversations. But therapists like myself are doing work virtually. You know, the, I'm not seeing people in my office, but I am seeing people in the virtual realm through a lot of telehealth um, platforms. Uh, so find a therapist. You know, those, the people, all the things that people have commonly used to distract themselves from their problems, that has been stripped away. So the problems are there in full effect. And if you find yourself experiencing that, don't be afraid to reach out and find a therapist. A big resource that I commonly recommend people look at is Psychology Today. That's a really, really good resource to find therapists. And you can Google if you want a woman therapist, if you want an LGBTQ friendly therapist or aware therapist, if you want a black therapist, uh, Latinx therapist, you know, you can really tailor your search to the type of therapist you want. There's couple therapists on there. So I would encourage people to look for help. And in our house, I have my own individual therapist. Ben and I have a couple's therapist and our daughter has her therapist. So we are, everybody never misses those appointments. We, we have our computers up and running at, you know, the prescribed time so that we can make sure we're taking care of each other. Cause you know, these, these I, I can't even articulate how strange and traumatic these times are. So anything you can do to support yourself and, and your loved ones, even if you don't like them at times, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and then my last question, I know you have to um, get going. My last question is, um, you know, it's a huge concern for um, the black community, the Latinx community, with our numbers really rising and mm. uh, the more experts like first responders, I spoke to Captain Bilal the other day and, and really he said, the real reason is because a lot of us are first responders, you know, mm. and we weren't given enough information in, in the beginning. So we were exposed and, you know, so then it just spread like wildfire throughout, you know, our community. Um, so it's like an, an extra concern all the way around physically will they get the the help that they need uh globally you have people turning black people away you know because of they're saying you know we started it which wasn't isn't true um and then um economically what what this really means what it's going to look like going back into the workforce or trying to get back into the workforce with this stigma 
on, you know, our community, the Latinx community. Um, I think it's, it's really done a number on the psyche for a lot of people. How do you address that? Well, you know, again, these kind of um, inequities and, and um, kind of health, uh, severe health disparities that existed before this pandemic have only been magnified and put people at greater risk. So Black folks suffer at, from every kind of disease uh, more than our white counterparts. So diabetes, heart disease, asthma, uh, chronic pulmonary diseases, all of those things that put you at greater risk should you get this virus and increase your uh, likelihood of dying. That's, you know, much more prevalent in the black and brown communities. So what I would say is that it's only highlighting more so the areas that we need to do more work at. And uh, I would also say that we as Black folks have to really be taking care of ourselves and taking care of our elders, especially at this time, because they are more at risk. So whatever we can do to support our seniors. But if, if, if folks are saying wear masks, if folks are saying, you know, shelter in place as much as you can, if you do know folks who economically can't afford to stay home, then give them masks, um, provide them with uh, masks that are being made, anything you can to support people who are at greater risk, then do that. But there will be so much that comes out of this, Malika, that um, we will have to be uh, working overtime. And I know Dr. Kendi, who came and spoke, was it last uh, fall or spring, Dr. Kendi, the anti, the author of the anti-racist, how to be an anti-racist, came and talked. And he is collecting data about how detrimental uh, the disease, the, this virus has been on the Black community. So um, I think being aware of folks like that, but it, this virus is, I don't know, that these kind of statistics, it's been lethal. And it's, it's not only wiping out lives, it's wiping out um, um, kind of cultural mainstays. Mainstays, the um, devastation in uh, New Orleans and Louisiana have, you know, it's been horrific. Mm -hmm. um, so I hate that we're ending on that note. Um, but yeah, the devastation that is taken on the black community shows where we need to advocate more with respect to better health care. Um, like you said, people are being turned away from the hospital. They're not being taken seriously when they're talking about difficulty breathing. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the lack of resources and ventilators aren't being sent to hospitals that need them more. Some of them are just sitting in um, other hospitals. So it, the response, um, again, has been devastating. But if we know beforehand that communities are at risk, then that's where we need to be putting our resources. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's real, and, and I think people are just now really starting to grasp that this thing is real, and, and it's having an impact. I think for so long, and many of you know the Black community, Latinx community, we weren't really accepting it, too. I think that's, that was um, an issue as well, but now I think everybody's taking it, it serious, so I just want to keep the information going out there because, you know, you still have people kind of living in la la land about it, like it can't happen to them. Well, yeah, I, I think you're right, but, but but part of it was the uh, languaging around when it all first happened. Like the first, you said the first responder said to you, is that they said, "Oh, the people who are in trouble," it it seemed like, and they didn't say this you know, in such a, a concrete way, but they, it made it seem like older white folks were the ones who were most at risk. 
Mm -hmm. um, and people, and they kept speaking about things like underlying conditions, mm -hmm. um, such as, you know, uh, a chronic lung disease or you, using that kind of languaging versus saying, hey, black and brown communities where diabetes, heart disease, asthma and, and uh, environmental racism have been most prevalent are going to put you more at risk for uh, this virus that is highly contagious. So can we do more where we have stacked people on top of each other? Uh, and yet again, environmental racism and that kind of thing. How are we going to address those issues? So this virus, any again, every kind of inequity or uh, structural uh, racist policies that have been in place for uh, centuries are all being highlighted now in the way that this virus is ta attacking communities. And we all have to hold our elected officials accountable. The things that we see where these Republican governors are opening up, you know, are saying they're going to open up uh, the, uh, uh, their communities again are Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina. Those are communities that are uh, have huge black and brown communities and they're very rich in cultural uh, history and, um, and uh, traditions. So those guys, um, those, I, I, yeah, those racist kinds of, um, and, um, and at best, ignorant uh, decision makers are putting our elders and cultural um, long-standing like communities at, at high risk. At, at risk, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Oh, goodness gracious. So what, what uh, to, we'll end on this note. <laughs> <laughs> what would be your message to the Black and Latinx community, especially those communities that are about to open back up and they are going to be serious high risk? Um, what, what is your message to them to mentally, emotionally, spiritually? I would say as much as you can, and and be and because uh, black and brown folks tend to be very faithful and um, uh, spiritual folks, I would really encourage faith leaders to have a bigger voice at this time and encourage their um, uh, folks to stay home, stay home. Even though these policymakers are making decisions they are not in your best interest. So if faith leaders could be more vocal about saying these folks are doing this, but hey, don't, don't do this. Like here in Evanston, you know, William and his sister are taking care of elders and saying, we're going to help you to protect yourself. We're, we're, you know, because <laughs> we're in, right, Jennifer, Ed, Jennifer's edibles have a better, um, uh, you know, have an understanding of how to support people. So if we could have more of a support in that way in our communities to help people. And again, that financial stuff, if we could be more um, clear about what are the financial ways that we can support each other yeah. so that people aren't stressing about financial and economic kinds of issues. Uh, I, I think we're gonna have to find ways of being in community to take care of ourselves so that we just aren't um, decimated by this virus and the uh, um, emotional issues that emerge because of this. And it's not unlike we, we haven't done these kinds of things before. That's how black and brown communities have always survived is through uh, community and activism and, um, and support of one another. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Blunt. And tell people where they can reach you. They need to talk to somebody, need to find that zone in their house to come talk to you to get away from everybody. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so 
break it <laughs> their sanity. <laughs> Yeah, my website is bluntpsychology.com, so people can find me there. Um, people can always uh, send me a text. My The number on my website is 773-633-0116, so you can give me a call. Um, I am accepting clients now, um, but uh, yeah, so those kinds of ways people can find me. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Blunt. And please stay safe. Tell Ben and Safia I said hello. And thank you for all that your family does in this, in this community. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, Malika. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank all right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> this has been Malika Evanston Live TV. And again, you all, please be safe. Follow the guidelines, keep your distance, please, please keep your six feet distance, wash your hands, wear your gloves, and people, for God's sake, wear your masks, wear your masks, I don't care where you go, if you're just walking up the street just to get a little sunshine, wear your mask, and now that we know from Captain Bilal a couple days ago on Evanston Live TV, take your shoes off at the front door. COVID-19 lives on your shoes and you tracking it all in your house and then you're walking barefoot and now you got COVID-19 in your feet. So please, please, please just, I know it's a new way of life. Everything has become a hassle now. Uh, we have to disinfect everything, um, but please be safe out there. We don't want to lose any more people, please, please. And um, most definitely if you need someone to talk to, you know, you have Dr. Melissa Blunt right here. I will be sure to have her information in the description. And, um, you know, if you're seeing this in another state somewhere, um, please get in touch with, with a therapist if you feel yourself sinking emotionally, mentally, spiritually, um, and you just need, you know, someone to talk to. Um, if there's stress and strain in the family and the marriage during this time, please reach out and talk to someone, get a different perspective and, um, and some more coping skills. We all need new coping skills right now to deal with this new reality, this new reality that we're in, uh, COVID-19 quarantine lockdown. Um, it's new to all of us, unless you're over a hundred years old, uh, this is new to everybody. Um, so it's okay to, uh, you know, talk to somebody talk to someone about it. All right. So you guys, please be safe. Thank you so much for tuning into Evanston Live TV. We have many more guests coming up and uh, I'm going to do all I can to make sure that you stay informed with uh, information to get us through this. Okay. Thank you and be safe.